Hello, sports fans and baseball fans out there. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here to do a recap of the end of our Elmwood Stratomatic baseball season. Elmwood League is a league that I'm in. It's a competitive league. We uh, send, we do our CMs every week, and then we send our new CM to the uh, commissioner, and he runs the games. Then he sends out the results, and we adjust our CMs as we see fit for the next week, and so forth, until the season is over. And now the season is over. So let's take a look at the standings. And let's move the standings over here so you can get a good look at them. You can see again, I have finished last. Well, I finished last in my division. I'm not the worst team in the league. That uh, distinction goes to the Adams family, as you can see. Uh, but I was very bad. I mean, you know. Now, I, I was very bad with essentially the same team I had last year. And if you will recall, last year I missed the playoffs by one game. So, um, yeah, I mean, Strat is a fickle game. Uh, but anyway, these are the standings. I was 61 and 101. And uh, a couple of things I want to point out here. Uh, first of all, West Hills was great. 112 win season. Wow. Um, Hawaii was very good. They won 107 games. Federal Way was very good. They won over 100 games. But uh, one thing I really want to point out is I mentioned Adams was the worst team in the league. However, if you watch the past videos, you know that usually Adams is a very good team. Usually Adams wins their division or is second in their division. And in fact, last year, Adams was in the World Series and lost the World Series in seven games to New York. So, yeah, they're usually very good and this year they were not. Uh, the same thing goes for the Painted Posts. The Painted Posts in the entire history of this league were only under 500 once in all those seasons. And I don't know how many it is, but it's over 20. Um, but they've had another sub-500 year. So uh, anyway, I will take a look at the um, statistics for my team, a couple of other teams, and we will also look at the league leaders uh, because there are some uh, interesting things going to be in line for that. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the PBM league, total stats, standings. Let's go to the first grand totals. So here you can see where everybody finished with their ERAs and their batting averages. Uh, West Hills had a 270 batting average, as did Federal Way, which is very good for a team. Um, my team uh, had a 250 batting average. Um, but I want to also point out here in the home run column, you have uh, Hawaii with 328 home runs, which is extremely good, and New York with 347 home runs. New York actually set a new league record for team home runs, 347. Broke the record of a team that I had years ago. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a story for another day. But anyway, they have had 347 home runs. So there you go on that. And then, of course, down here you've got the team ERAs. Hawaii with a very good team ERA. Also West Hills. You would expect that. Um, my team ERA was 480, so I was the, I had the fifth best team ERA in the league, or the fifth worst, the fifth worst uh, team ERA in the league. Now let's go to, I think league leaders is on here somewhere. Uh, let's see, no, I guess it isn't, so, uh. Let's go, I, where are league, uh, huh. where are league leaders? I'm 
Nope, not on second grand totals. Hmm. Well, I had planned on doing that. Uh, let's go league. Statistic. It's got to be somewhere in statistics. League stats. No, that's where I was. Um, hmm. There has got to be a place here where they talk about uh, league leaders. There it is. Why did I miss that? Okay. So anyway, here we're going to go over the league leaders. Uh, batting average, Acuna led the league. Kremlin Gremlins, Acuna hit 354. Freddie Freeman hit 340. Diaz hit 331. I'm not going to go down all of these lists. You can look at the ones that you're interested in. What I want to focus on is home runs. We've got Judge with 68 home runs. Matt Olson of Hawaii with 61 home runs. Pete Alonzo hit 56 home runs. Quite a bit. Runs batted in, Matt Olson had 131 uh, RBIs. Jake Berger of the Post had 128, as did Pete Alonzo of the Knights, and Judge of the Knights had 127. Uh, J.D. Martinez of Hawaii had 126. So let's just go up here, see what we missed here. Runs scored, Hawaii, Olson 143, Soto 135, Judge 132. Uh, hits, Acuna had 232, Freeman had 230, uh, Corbin Carroll had 14 triples, and Benson had 12. Thank you, Benson. Is that Will Benson? I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Walks, Soto had 149. Then there's a big drop-off to Judge, who had 114. Um... So anyway, some of these stuff. Uh, stolen bases. Uh, Ruiz of Painted Post had 94. Acuna had 79. And then there's a big drop off to Horner who had 43. Um, let's see here. Stolen base percentage. Hitting streaks. The longest one was Tati Jr. Fernando Tati Jr. of Hawaii had a 25 game hitting streak. Um, let's see, slugging percentage, Judge led it with 691, Olsen, big drop off to 630, then a big drop off to Diaz who had 605, um, OPS, we had like five guys here, over a thousand OPS, Judge, Diaz, Alvarez, Acuna, and Olsen. So, um... Let's go down to pitching, wins, Logan Webb of uh, uh, Washington something, I forget, but anyway. Uh, 25, Cole of Bobtown had 22, Kirby and Senga Ihich had 21, Corbin Burns of Federal Way had 20. Um, Castillo, for me, led in lo Well, he was up there in losses. He had 15. So did Corbin. They were both tied with 15 losses. Not surprisingly. Um, innings pitched. Cole pitched 245 innings. Webb pitched 243 and two-thirds. Kirby pitched 239. So we got some guys with some hefty innings pitched. Of course, we have liberal rules in this league. So... A guy that pitched 180 innings can get up to 245 or 250 or whatever. Uh, so, you know, complete game, save percent. These are all things you can look at. You can stop the video and look at what you're interested in. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to point those out really quickly. So now let's take a look at my team. My Providence team, which was not very good. We were 61 and 101. We were 30 and 51 on the at home and 31 and 50 on the road. 
Now, an interesting thing about this, I was bad, and I was bad at both of the uh, on the road and at home, but I was roughly 500 at, in both of them. I was like, uh, like I mean, not 500, but I the record was roughly the same on the road and at home. And that's the same situation I had last year. Last year, I won like 90 games, I think. But my record was roughly the same, like 45 wins on the road and 45 wins at home. So at least we're consistent that way. Let's go look at the primary. Um, so, you know, El Tuve had a good year. He hit 310, had 12 home runs, 36 RBIs, 22 stolen bases. Garver, of course, he had a good card last year. He hit 299. Harper hit 286 with 19 home runs. Um, Goldschmidt ended up doing about what his card was. Early on, he was really bad. He was really under that. But he, I guess he rallied. And near the end of the season, he came up with statistics that were roughly about equivalent to what he actually did in real life. He had fewer home runs. Like in real life, he had 20-something and he had 16 here. But he also had 100, 100 fewer at-bats or something for me than he actually did on his card. So uh, basically he did about the same. Um, and then uh, for pitching, you can take a look at the pitching. It wasn't anything special. Uh, you know, Suarez had a 359 earned run average, was four and five. Yarborough did a lot of relief for me. He had a 359 earned run average. Verlander I traded to New York, and uh, I brought back Corbin in that deal. And surprisingly, actually, Corbin was terrible overall. Um, but he was, like, for this league, for a 20-team league, um, this is these are actually somewhat decent statistics. He had a 456 earned run average for me, 101 hits allowed in 94 innings. But let's take a look at what Corbin did overall and compare it to. So you can see overall he had a 558 earned run average, but he had a 445 for me. So I don't know what it was that was special about where I am. Maybe he liked pitching in my home park, which is I think the Houston Astros park, Minute Maid. So I don't know. But anyway, uh, those were my statistics. There's nothing really special about him. Um, so anyway, uh, if we go back to the, the league stats and we look at the standings, the top, well, the, the winner of every division automatically goes to the playoffs. Then it's the two next best teams in each sub-league. And these top two divisions right here are one sub-league, and these two divisions right here are the next sub-league. So uh, Hawaii won their division. They go in. Uh, Federal Way automatically goes in. The Desert Dogs had uh, a 94 wins, and they make it. And uh, Bobtown had 98, so they make it. So it just turns out that the top two here in each division made the playoffs. Um, but it could have been different if somebody had had a better record. Like if Caseville had had 99 wins, then they would have been the fourth team. Uh, Kremlin won their division, so they make it. New York uh, was one game worse, just one game worse. With all those guys, Judge, and all those guys that they had, they managed to finish one game behind Crumlin. Who knows how that happened. Um, West Hills won their division, so they make it. And then the next, uh, the next best team overall is the Cleveland Comets. 81 win team, 500 team, they're gonna make the playoffs. So that is uh, who's gonna make the playoffs and um, uh, that is basically a quick rundown of how our league finished, who's going to the playoffs, who the league leaders were, uh, some of the you know players um, on the teams, the league you know the, the league leaders. So uh, another bad year for Providence. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that. Next year, I should be better. Of course, I keep saying that. The players, what they're doing in real life, you would think I would be better next year. 
but this is the Elmwood League. Elmwood League, a great player can be crappy. So, who knows? Like, for instance, El Tuve, very good. I'll keep him next year. Harper, very good in real life, should be good next year. Um, uh, let's see, Jeffers is a, he, he not, he doesn't get on base as well as he used to, but he is a catcher with power. Ezekiel Tovar should be a very good defensive shortstop and have a little bit of pop in his bat, but who knows? <laughs> um, Eugenio Suarez has come on hot lately, and so he might finish with some decent statistics. Rooker, Brent Rooker, is going to have a crazy good card, you would think. But God knows how he'll do in Elmwood. He might be, you know, he might be Mario Mendoza in Elmwood. I don't know. Um, Pitching-wise, you know, Adam, Jason Adam, very good reliever. Um, R Ranger Suarez had a great year. But again, who knows if he'll be great next year. Yarbrough had a great year in relief. Uh, um, Joe Jimenez, good reliever. Castillo, now see, and this is the perfect example. Castillo was very good last year on the card in Major League Baseball. But he had a 558 earned runner average for me, and he was 11 and 15. So who knows? But I am encouraged, at least I have on paper, what looks like should be a good team next year. So uh, that's my look at our league. What did you guys think? Leave your comments below. Give me a thumbs up for the video because it helps the channel. But that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.